Neurosurgery is a challenging career, and as an international medical graduate, to pursue a career of neurosurgery in the UK might be even more challenging. In this video, what I will do, I will go through all the steps and possible pathways for you to pursue a career of neurosurgery in the UK. I am Mohamed Draz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. So as a starting point, I suspect that you are graduated from your medical school from your uh, country, want to go for a neurosurgical career in the UK. Before you start finding a job or try to get a neurosurgical job, you have to obtain a certification or a license to practice in the UK. The first step to do so is by obtaining what's called a GMC registration, which is the General Medical Council which is basically the authority that licenses people to work as a doctor in the UK. You also might need to do some other tests like the English uh, qualification test. To obtain the GMC registration, there are three pathways that you can do so. The first one is to do an exam. The exam is called the BLAB exam. The BLAB exam is basically a knowledge exam about everything in medicine it comes in two parts now it's widely available all over the world not just in the uk so you don't have to travel to the uk to do the exam like in the past now i understand that they have centers all over the world in the middle east and in india so you can probably do the exams where you live or closer to where you live given the high demand for this exam it's probably very uh, difficult to get a spot so you have to be um, very quick in reserving the slot and also it might take you a bit of time. Once you finish the lab exam now this means that you are qualified to be a doctor in the UK and then you can obtain your GMC registration. This is the most common pathway to come into the UK. So the second pathway that can help you obtain GMC registration in the UK is to do what's called a post postgraduate qualification. So after you finished your medical school, you have done some sort of qualification that can help you obtain GMC registration. In that case, most people are talking about the MRCS as we are a surgical specialty. So we're talking about MRCS, but other medical specialties have similar things as a membership of the Royal College. So if you think about coming to the UK, you can either do type two types of exams, either the PLAB, which is more basic, more about the medicine that you have studied in the medical school, or if you have done some surgical specialty in your country for a few years and you have some surgical knowledge, so it might be useful that you get the MRCS exam directly. Again, that's widely available all over the world, not as frequent as the plan, but it's available. And most of the people working in the UK as neurosurgeons or neurosurgical trainees, they have to do the MRCS exam. So the good thing about it, that it will help you in your CV, and also it will help you to get the GMC registration. It's more expensive than the black exam, but if you are planning to come to the UK as a neurosurgeon, it's MRCS is actually a good option. And also it's not just confined to neurosurgery, but you can use it for any surgical specialty application. The third pathway to get a GMC registration in the UK is through what's called the sponsorship pathway. The sponsorship pathway is the least used of those and not a lot of people know about it. Sponsorship is basically Basically, the GMC has created a list of sponsoring buddies who are able to say, you know what, Mohammed is a very good guy. He met a specific standards of what we have and we want to sponsor his application to be registered in the GMC and to get a license to practice. So how do you do that? You do that by, there are two ways. One way is some of the hospitals and trusts the NHS hospitals when they have a deficiency in some certain specialties. So let's say they have a deficiency, the internal medicine rota, for example, or A&E. So what they do, they create an internal program, they create jobs and they say, we are an approved sponsor for the GMC. When people apply for those jobs without having a GMC registration, if they are accepted for those jobs, then this NHS trust will take their application and say, we are sponsoring those guys for the GMC registration. So they obtain the GMC registration without doing a lab exam or any postgraduate qualification. Most of the Royal Colleges as well are sponsoring bodies. So the other way is that you get your sponsorship through the Royal College. There is here a hidden way of getting a job, but it's getting slightly difficult because the market in the UK is a slightly oversaturated on the junior level. So the jobs are not easy to get. From experience with some colleagues in the past, what they have done is that they managed to get a job in the UK. So they apply for jobs without having a GMC registration. Once they get the job, they are accepted. 
then they take that and go to the Royal College of Surgeons and say, you know what, I've got a job and I would like if you could support me sponsoring my application for the GMC registration. And they have done so and got GMC registration without doing a lab or doing an MRCS exam. Okay, so now we reach it to that point that you managed to pass some sort of exam or to get a sponsorship and you are GMC registered. So you are allowed to work in the UK with a license to practice. The question now, okay, how can I find a job in the UK? Before we talk about how to find a job, there is a, a much more important question to ask yourself. The question is, what actually I do I want to get from coming to the UK? And also, what level of experience that you have? The first question is, what do you want by coming to the UK? Because there are different goals from different people. So someone might be living somewhere, he has a very good living standards or he has a very good salary somewhere, but he wants to get some experience in some subspecialty of neurosurgery. So let's say he's a practicing neurosurgery in Egypt and wants to come to the UK get some subspecialty training, let's say in functional neurosurgery. And then he wants and plans to go back to Egypt to practice neurosurgery in Egypt. That's a totally different pathway from someone who wants to come to the UK and stay in the UK for the longer term and to get a consultant job in the UK as a consultant neurosurgeon. So you have to ask yourself this question because the jobs that you are going to apply for are totally different jobs. If you want to obtain specific skills in a certain subspecialty of neurosurgery, then you are probably talking about applying for fellowships, which are subspecialty fellowships, which I will talk about in the subtypes of jobs in the UK. But if you are someone who wants to come to the UK to practice neurosurgery, to train as a neurosurgeon and to qualify as a neurosurgeon to become a consultant neurosurgeon in the UK, Again, you apply through different pathways. The second question that you need to ask yourself, what level of experience that I have? Did you do any neurosurgical training before coming to the UK, either for a year or two or three or four years? Some people come to the UK with a huge experience or you haven't done any experience of neurosurgery outside the UK. The difference is very important because that will guide you to go to specific jobs. If you don't have any neurosurgical experience, so you cannot apply for uh, senior level jobs, which are more of a registrar level jobs that you are able to do that on call on your own, that you are able to do most of the emergency operations and the general neurosurgical work on your own or with very minimal supervision. But if you have some experience, then you you be able to do so. Okay, so now once you answer those two questions, let's come into what types of jobs that are available in the UK. So the jobs are divided into two main parts or two main types of jobs, training jobs and non-training jobs. It's a very weird naming in the UK, but the training jobs means that it's a training number. It's like a matching in the, in the US. It's like you going through a structure the training program for eight years to obtain certification as a neurosurgeon in the UK. But the problem with this that it's very competitive. The numbers accepted into neurosurgical training every year is very, very small. We're talking about probably around 10 or 15 people every year. It's really difficult to come to the UK and get a, a training job from outside the UK, but you can get this by doing some work in the UK for a year or so and then you can apply for training. However, it's still very competitive. So you have to have a very good CV to do so and to get a training job. The other pathway, which is a non-training job, which is basically the majority of the people working in the UK at this stage, probably coming to about 50% of people working in the UK are on a non-training job. What does that mean? It means that you are doing exactly the same job as the training job, but the difference is that you are structuring your training as on your own. No one is going to tell you you have a deficiency in the number of lumbar spine procedures, or you have a deficiency in the number of meningiomas, or a deficiency in the number of vascular cases. You have to fulfill this. No one is going to mentor or guide you about the process to be a consultant or to qualify as a neurosurgeon in the UK. So you have to do that on your own. It doesn't have stability of the training program. So you probably might move between different hospitals every year or two or every three years, and then you tailor your program as you go. What you're trying to do through those non-training jobs is that you obtain the same skills, the same competencies as the trainee would do through the training program.
So let's keep the training pathway on the side. You can apply for this as after you come to the UK, but let's focus on the jobs that you probably will be applying for as you are coming as an IMG applying from outside the UK. Those shops come at three different levels or three different naming or three different titles. It's very important to know that because this is how you're going to look for those jobs. The first level, which is the most junior level, which is basically equivalent to an SHO, a senior house officer, or an equivalent to an FY2 or FY3, which is a foundation year program. This, is, this means that you are someone who's going to do some of the word work maybe going to theater from now and then, but mainly word-based work. And that's equivalent to the training program of an ST1 or ST2. So the first two years of training. Those jobs would come under the naming of Senior House Officer of Neurosurgery, Junior Clinical Fellow of Neurosurgery, or a Trust Degree Doctor equivalent to ST1, ST2. The second level of jobs, which is a registrar job. The registrar jobs, which means that you are an equivalent of an ST3+, plus, meaning that you are within your third year of neurosurgical training all the way up to ST8 or more. So if you have had some experience outside the UK, you can apply for ST3+. Those jobs would come under different titles and names as well. So it can be advertised as a trust grade job ST3+, a senior clinical fellow, registrar of neurosurgery, trust grade neurosurgery job. Just have a look at neurosurgery jobs in general and then looking through the job description, you probably would identify if that's kind of a junior level job or a more of a senior registrar job. The third type of jobs, which is the fellowships, which as I mentioned earlier, in all the UK, many centers would have subspecialty fellowships. This means that you spend at least a year, maybe more, working on a specific subspecialty of neurosurgery. This could be a vascular spine, functional neuro-oncology fellowship. Those jobs are suitable for people who are, as I said earlier, coming from outside the UK, want to obtain specific skills and competencies and go back to their home country, or people who spend some time in the UK on a junior or a senior level registrar. And then after you finish your exam, which is FRCS exam for neurosurgery, then you start looking for fellowships. Pretty much everyone who has got a consultant job in the UK at this stage would have done maybe more than one fellowship. So as you go through this non-training pathway, you are working in the UK, you work for a few years, probably could be five, six years, maybe more, and then you do a subspecialty fellowship. Once you finish your exams and you finish a few years working in the UK, you can prepare your application to go through to the GMC to say, I have obtained all the competencies and skills equal as to the trainee through a structured training program. So I want you as a GMC qualify me and to obtain a specialist registration, which means allowed to work as a specialist to neurosurgeon, which means a consultant to neurosurgeon in the UK and to get a permanent job as a neurosurgeon in the UK. That's the end of like a very long journey in the UK. You have to go through pretty much all of those steps. The last point I want to mention is where to find those jobs. The jobs are all advertised online and you have to look into multiple websites because the UK is a big country. It has like four nations in it. Ireland would have a website, different website. Scotland is different and England is different. I hope this gives you kind of a framework of how to come from as an IMG from your home country to the UK and what's the available pathways and jobs and job titles that you can do. What's very, very, very important, which I mentioned earlier and I keep mentioning to everyone coming from outside the UK, from day one and even before coming, you have to be very specific about your goals and your plans from staying in the UK because the work that you're going to do, the jobs that you're going to apply for, the competencies and skills and the documentation of your work that you're going to do in the UK is totally different if you are planning to stay or if you are planning to go home after your um, training and fellowship. I hope you find this uh, video helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions and also if you want to have any other specific parts about the neurosurgical specialty in the UK to be covered in another video. Stay tuned for the next one.